This video is about how beliefs can actually prevent you from seeing abuse as abuse. Now, the last apology that came from RIGPA was a great step in the right direction. And I did a whole video about that. But the reason why most of us think we aren't ever going to get anything better than that is because the core of RIGPA, the old guard, those who are teaching now, they still believe the same things that they believed that enabled Soggy or Rinpoche to abuse all those people. The crazy thing is that Buddhism is supposed to be about dropping all concepts. It's supposed to be letting go of beliefs because it's only when you let go of beliefs that you can actually see reality as it is directly in front of you happening now. Your beliefs filter the way that you perceive your reality. If somebody is hitting somebody else and you're looking without any beliefs overlaid in that, what you're seeing is simply somebody hitting somebody else. And you will see if it's done playfully, if it's hard or soft, and how the person hit reacts to that. Now, if the hit is such that the person falls down unconscious, clearly harm has been done. If the person is in tears, maybe they haven't been hit, maybe they've just been verbally abused in front of 300 people, a common occurrence, and they're in tears and they are incredibly upset, then if you are looking at that without the filter of some belief that will distort what you're seeing, what you're seeing is a bully bullying somebody. You're seeing harm because somebody is hurting somebody else. Now that's clear to everybody, every normal person who's looking at that situation. But it's not clear to somebody who has an all-pervasive belief that the most important thing in their life is their devotion to their teacher. If you hold that as your most important thing, and along with that is the belief that you have to see everything that your lama, your guru does as being perfect, as being good, as being right, as being helpful, then you're not going to see abuse as abuse. You're going to see it as love. And we were trained to see the abuse that we did see. We were trained to see it that way. This is um, brainwashing, thought control, alive and well in Rigpa. Has it changed? I don't know. But I bet you're still being taught that your devotion to your teacher is the most important thing. And what real devotion is, is seeing the Lama purely. And they think that seeing the Lama purely means seeing everything he does as good. Which is, oh, you know, it's actually <clears throat> a very surface and a somewhat distorted view of what is meant by seeing purely. Um, I don't want to go into why they're wrong, but you will find all that stuff in my book, Fallout, Recovering from Abuse in Tibetan Buddhism, because I've got a whole section on examining abuse-enabling beliefs. There are teachings that contribute to people believing that seeing your teacher purely means seeing that everything that he does is good and therefore you tell yourself that harm is not harm when he's doing it. You tell yourself that he couldn't possibly be harmful because he's a Buddha because everything that a Buddha does is good and everything that a Buddha does is for the benefit of beings and therefore this is how the faulty logic goes is since my Lama is a Buddha then he can't harm anybody, even if he's hitting them. That's based on the belief that Sogyal Rinpoche was a Buddha. Because a Buddha is so enlightened, so tuned in to everyone else, that they couldn't possibly hurt someone else. Which actually means they're not going to beat them up. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the Buddha 
beating somebody up. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, where did this come from? I suspect these ideas came from um, llamas in the past in Tibet who, you know, happened to be abusive. And so these beliefs were sort of slotted in there um, in the teachings in such a way that they could get away with it so that they would seem to be good rather than bad so that they didn't lose their students and their money and all this kind of stuff. You know, that's how distortion gets in. You could say that, yeah, this is this is the religion and this is how you believe and that's a correct belief. And there are plenty of people who think that way. The people at the core of Rigpa, the people who enabled the abuse, obviously, they think that way. They, they think that Sogil could do no harm, even though he's abusing somebody. But these people are never going to use the word abuse and they're never going to apologise for it. Because if they saw that, abuse as abuse, for them, they would be thinking that they had given up their pure view of their Lama. I don't know how to explain that seeing something purely is not seeing it all as good. It doesn't mean that abuse is not abuse. <laughs> if you're really in the nature of mind, right, <laughs> then all your beliefs have dropped away. So you see things for what they are. You don't see them filtered through these beliefs. And this is the real issue at the core of Rigpa. They see everything or they saw everything through these beliefs, through the beliefs that they must be obedient without question, that they must have complete and utter devotion with um, no sense of criticism. They believed that absolute truth was somehow beyond the conventional ideas of, of good and bad. And, and it is in a way, but it does, that doesn't mean that good and bad don't exist on a conventional la level. It doesn't mean that harm and not harm don't exist on a conventional level. So there's a, a wrong understanding of some key concepts there. So for long as they hold these beliefs, they're never going to be able to admit that Sovial abused someone because they don't see it that way. They see it through their beliefs and their beliefs tell them that actually what he was doing was expressing his love. And this is what they told us when we watched him verbally abuse someone, that someone would get up the next day and say, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I felt that is the greatest love. I am so blessed. And that's what we were taught. We were taught that his abuse was blessings. That what by his abuse he was um, purifying the student's karma and speeding them on to enlightenment. That's the belief. Now, if you hold that belief, then it's quite possible that when he abuses you, you may get some benefit out of it because your belief is distorting your perception and your experience. But for those who were abused really badly and abused constantly, this barrage of abuse, at a certain point, this is what I've heard from people who have experienced this, at a certain point they just realise that no, they're fooling themselves, that by trying to hold on to these beliefs that make it okay, they eventually get to the point where they realise that it's just not okay. If you had a problem with your abuse and you go to someone, they would spout back to you these same beliefs in an attempt to make you see that actually it was good for you. So the people at the core of Rigpa who will not permit an apology to go out using the word abuse that will not apologise for Sogyal's abuse, that will not admit that they enabled abuse, are people who cannot see. They simply cannot see that Sogyal abused someone because their beliefs are absolutely acting like blinkers. They cannot see it. All they see is the love of the master. And what can you do? Rigpa make noises about trying to heal the rift between the people who are abused and those who remain. They make noises that sound all very wonderful 
Um, they are trying to get a restorative justice process happening. And that's why that last apology came out, because the people they wanted to engage with this restorative justice simply said, we can't do that until you admit that there was a crime. So their new apology was an attempt to get to a point where they could admit that there was a problem <laughs> that we had to actually discuss so that there could be some reparative justice. But what we're saying is, no, we cannot have any restorative justice until there's been some admission that in actual fact a crime has been committed. And that requires them to admit that Sylvia will abuse someone. And um, mm, an awful lot of us think that ain't ever going to happen, at least not to those people at the core of RIGPA, the people that were Sogil's right-hand people that are still, you know, basically running the show, even if they're not in management, they are teaching, they are in roles of influence, so the beliefs that they believe are what they're teaching. For so long as those people are there, it ain't going to happen. I know the people that have left have managed to drop all those beliefs, have managed to let go of them and, and see through them. And in Buddhism, that's how your relationship with your beliefs should be. You should be holding them lightly. You should be seeing that they are merely beliefs that you are using in order to navigate the world and that they are not truth. And, you know, at a certain point, I mean, you know, the Buddha said, in order to gain enlightenment, you have to get rid of the four obscurations, which is emotional, karmic, habitual and conceptual and conceptual is the area of beliefs so you cannot attain enlightenment while you are holding on to any concepts which includes beliefs now when i say rigpa i'm talking about the old guard i'm talking about those who are clinging to these concepts they're holding on to it for grim life thinking that somehow if they loosen those beliefs they're thinking that somehow or other they're going to shatter their samaya with their lama. And in Tibetan Buddhism, if your samaya is broken, then you know that all these terrible things are supposed to happen to you. So there's fear in there as well. Those people, they are not going to allow the other people in Rigpa who can see that it was abuse from actually saying it was abuse. So I can imagine there's quite a bit of conflict um, going on there. <laughs> <laughs> because I know there are people in Rigpa who do understand that what Sogil did was wrong, who, who are willing to admit that things got all twisted around and that Sogil did actually hurt people. The interesting thing about Samaya, and I think perhaps this is the reason why these folk cling to all of these ideas and cling to this idea that Sogil cannot do any harm, Samaya is, is, has been made so complex. It's got all these aspects to it that are like, they're like rules. So you made it simple. He said, it's your heart connection with your Lama. Now, I and you know, quite a few other people are able to look at So you as like um, your old uncle. You know, it's, it's, it's a member of your family that, you know, he's done some terrible things. And there's a side of him that, you know, you really don't like, but he's still your uncle. You can't cut off from him completely because he's still part of your family. He's still your uncle. Soyo was our teacher, mine for 20 years. I'm never going to get rid of that, no matter how hard I try, because it's a memory. Because like the rest of my life, it's, it's, it's part of me. And if I were to do any Tibetan Buddhist practice, he'd still be there as one of the lamas because... That's the role that he took, even if he's not taking that role now. So what I'm saying here is that they can actually admit, if they wanted to, they can actually use the word abuse and admit that he abused people, even if they didn't feel it as abuse. They could admit that he abused other people and still retain their samaya. If they just drill down onto the essence of samaya, the heart connection with your lama, instead of looking at all the rules, and, I, you know, it's weird because Sokyu made it simple. So if you're following his teachings, and it's quite simple. It's just your heart connection with your lama. And I can hate what he's done. I can never, ever forgive him what he, for what he's done. But I still feel for him in my heart. 
they hold these beliefs in a very kind of um, surface fashion. You know, it's like there is a teaching somewhere that says, um, see everything that your Lama does is good. And I, I really question that translation <laughs> as, you know, good, but that's what they hang on to, you know. Whereas for me, I look at that and go, yeah, what they mean is see purely. And that's different. Seeing purely is, it's seeing absolute truth at the same time as you see relative truth. And those two things are not divorced from each other. So if you are actually seeing absolute truth, you are actually also seeing the true nature of, of relative truth, which means you are actually seeing that it's abuse. Yeah. So anyway, there's the limitation. Devotion to the Lama was never meant to be devotion to a person. In terms of the practice, devotion to the Lama is devotion to your own true nature. Sogil taught that. So, you know, why, why are you clinging to this devotion to a person? Sogil taught that he was merely a conduit, that that he was a symbol for a, a cosmic guru, a kind of a teaching principle, and an outer guru merely to raise your inner guru. In terms of the practice, the word lama, guru, in the practice, refers to the true nature of those gurus, which is the nature of mind. They're a symbol for the nature of mind. And, you know, Sogyal taught me that. So I'm not making this up. And if you're a follower of Sogyal, then, you know, you should be listening to what he said. I said to him one day, I said, you know, I can feel Guru Rinpoche in my practice, but I don't understand what he is. And he looked at me and he said, oh, that's very good. And I said, yeah, but, but, but like, what is he? What, how does he exist? What's his reality? Oh, he's Sogyal said. That's the nature of mind. He's the nature of mind. The guru is the nature of mind, the nature of reality. So if you must cling to something, if you must have devotion to something, look through the body, look through the person to what he represents and have your devotion to your goal, to the nature of mind. Because your devotion to the nature of mind is what keeps you tuned into it and that's how devotion in Zodshin works it's to help you plug in but not to plug into a person a personality as someone who clearly is not a buddha and when in the practice it says we must see our teacher as a buddha that's in the practice oh yes they do say we must see him as the buddha at all times but that's not to confuse the man <laughs> with his Buddha nature. Anyway, I'm sure that the people who most need to think about this are not watching this video, so I won't go on. My point here was merely to explain why there are people in Rigpa who cannot see abuse as abuse. So that's it for today. I hope you found it helpful. Bye.